What's going on? Did you sleep well last night? I did. I didn't sleep <laughs> too badly. Uh, I mean, hotels are a tough thing. Um, and we actually know the science that um, one half of your brain will actually not sleep as deeply than the other when you're sleeping in a, an unusual room, like a hotel room. Really? That's what fucks me up. Because yeah. when I'm on the road, you know, I'll do three different hotels in a week. Because I'll do like a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, like with gigs. And then by the time Sunday rolls around, I'm a mess. In rough shape. Yeah. yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah. And it's a, you know, it's a threat detection thing. Ah. That, um, I mean, if you look at other species, they can do this much more impressively than we can. So dolphins or any sort of sea-dwelling mammal can actually sleep with half a brain. So one half of their brain goes into deep sleep. The other half is wide awake. That's how people at the DMV do it. Those people that work at the Department of Motor Vehicles, <laughs> they're, they're, they work half asleep. You ever meet them? I haven't, no. Just, just but teasing you. I will, if uh, you're I, DMV I'll, listening, I'll, going, fuck you, man. Next time you come in to get your license renewed. There's my next NIH grant, I think, uh, looking at the DMV and sleep. But, but yeah, we. TSA workers, same thing. Same, yeah, same type of human. That I've come across. Yeah. Uh, them too. I'm just kidding, fuckers. Relax. Um, so when you're in a hotel room, what is happening? that your half your brain is not really sleeping. Yeah, so there's different stages of sleep. There are two principal types. One is non-rapid eye movement sleep or non-REM sleep. The other is REM sleep, uh, which is also known as dream sleep. Right. Um, and non-rapid eye movement sleep is further divided into four separate stages. Um, which are unimaginatively called stages one through four. <laughs> We're a creative bunch as, easy as to remember. researchers. It is true, uh, but I think it's also our low IQ. But it's the deep stages of sleep, three and four of that non-rapid eye movement. That's where a lot of sort of body replenishment takes place, great mm. for the cardiovascular system, metabolism, all of those good things. But that's the deep sleep that one half of your brain will resist going into when you're sleeping in a foreign environment. So it stays in this kind of lighter stage, almost like a threat detection system. Right. Um, and you can imagine why, you know, it's an unusual yeah. context evolutionarily. It would make a lot of sense to just have that sort of on guard one half of the brain. That makes um, so much sense. And that, that, that really, for me, it fills in the blanks of like why, even if I get, you know, seven, eight hour sleep on the road, I'm still kind of just out of it. Yeah, and that's in fact probably one of the, I think, the most impressive parts of um, new research on sleep. It's not just about quantity, it's also about quality. Mm. And quality can be as detrimental if you don't get it as a reduction in total quality. I mean, both are essential, right. but I think it speaks exactly to your point. You just don't feel like it's a refreshing sort of deep sleep. Um, yeah, it feels totally different. Um, it just it feels like, I guess I would say it feels like half asleep. Yeah. I mean, it's really kind of how it does feel. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I noticed, I did this thing with my friends called Sober October, where we um, didn't smoke any pot or do any, no drinking at all, nothing for, for a month. And uh, when I did it, one of the things I found was that after about, I don't know how many days, but it was noticeable that I would have these incredibly vivid dreams. And then I had read that marijuana does something to suppress heavy REM sleep? Like what, what, what is happening there? Yeah, so both of those chemicals, both of which are used as a sleep aid, alcohol and marijuana, are actually very good at blocking your dream sleep, your rapid eye movement sleep. And so what happens is that the brain is quite clever in this regard. It builds up a clock counter of how much dream sleep you should have had, but have not been getting. Whoa. And it starts to develop this increasing appetite and hunger for dream sleep. So that finally, when the alcohol actually gets out of your system, sober October, yeah. love, the, love the name, um, that's all of a sudden where you get what's called a REM sleep rebound effect, where you not only get the normal amount of REM sleep that you would normally have, you get that plus the brain tries to get back some of that dream sleep that it's been losing over the past maybe 11, <laughs> 11 months. Um, so you get this- Try 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to make any assumptions. Um, uh, so, um, so you get this REM sleep rebounded effect and that's where you have these really intense dream sleep um, situations. Yeah. It's the same reason that people, they'll say, like I had a bit too much to drink last night. Maybe it was a Friday or Saturday. They sleep in late. They say, I just had these crazy dreams. Mm. What happens there is a kind of a, an acute version where the alcohol is swilling around in your system. 
And after about six hours, your liver and your kidneys have finally excreted all of the alcohol. And your brain has been deprived of dream sleep for that first six hours. So then it feasts mm. in the last couple of hours. And that's why you have these really bizarre dreams after you've been drinking a little bit too much. Oh, wow. So but what is happening with marijuana, though, specifically? Do you know? Yeah. So marijuana, um, it, it does help people. Well, help. It, it puts people to sleep quicker. Although I think that the question is whether it's really naturalistic sleep or not that they go into. Certainly with alcohol, it's not. Um, that nightcap idea is, is a misnomer. Alcohol will actually, well, it's a form of drugs that we call the sedatives. And sedation is not sleep. It's very different. But we often mistake one for the other. Mm. Marijuana it seems to act in a physiologically very different way. It doesn't target the same receptors in the brain. So it's unclear whether the speed with which you fall asleep after um, having a session with marijuana is actually natural sleep. Let's assume it is. The problem, however, is that it then will start to disrupt REM sleep. It will start to block the process. We think perhaps at the level of the brainstem, which is where these two types of sleep, non-REM and REM sleep, will actually get sort of worked out. That's where marijuana may actually impact dream sleep and shut it down and block it. Have there been any studies on chronic marijuana smokers, like those uh, dawn to dust type characters that just are constantly high? Like, and what happens to their brain from not, because they must never hit, hit REM sleep. Yeah, so people haven't looked at marijuana. They have looked at alcohol, though. Mm. Exactly that. So what happens is if you look at alcoholics, um, they will have something often when they um, come off alcohol, something called delirium trems which is where the sort of DT, um, there what happens is that the alcohol has been blocking dream sleep for so long and the pressure for dream sleep is built up so powerfully in the brain, it actually just spills over into wakefulness. Whoa. And so the brain just says, look, okay, if I'm not going to get this dream sleep whilst you're asleep, I'm just going to take it whilst you're awake. <sighs> and so you start to essentially dream while you're awake. It's this sort of collision of two states of consciousness. So you get delirium. Wow. I always thought the DTs were detoxing. When someone said someone's going through the oh, DTs. Three, okay, yeah. So it's delirium tremor? That's yeah, delirium it. trems. Yeah, trems. Sort of. Mm. So what, like, what is going on with them when this is happening? So if, 